Handling errors is one of the less enjoyable aspects of software development, but it is an important one. You don't want to show the user a cryptic error message when something goes wrong, or worse, no error message. There is no clear-cut recipe you can follow, every project is different. The good news is that error handling is built into Swift and the combined framework. Let me show you how we can improve the code we wrote in the previous episode. We already handled one important error, a failed request. Remember from the previous episode that a request is retried once if it fails. In that scenario, we don't handle the error explicitly. We simply give the request another try. If the request failed due to a transient network or backend error, the second attempt has a reasonable chance of succeeding. What is nice about this approach is that the user is unaware of the second attempt. The fewer times we need to interrupt the user with bad news, the better. Later in the series, we create an API client that is responsible for communicating with the mock API. The view model communicates with the mock API through the API client. It is the task of the API client to handle errors and forward errors to the view model, but only those errors that the view model understands. What do I mean by that? A common mistake developers make is propagating errors upstream. This means that errors aren't handled but forwarded instead. The problem with this approach is that the upstream object receiving the error doesn't have the context it needs to appropriately handle the error. That is something we can avoid by defining a custom error type. Create a group with name networking and add a Swift file with name apierror.swift. We define an enum, API error, that conforms to the error protocol. There are plenty of things that can go wrong when sending a request to a remote API. Take a look at the URL error enum if you are curious. The view model is only interested in a small subset. We define a failed request case and an invalid response case. I usually also define an unknown case. The unknown case may seem like one of those easy ways out when you don't know what to do, but that isn't entirely accurate. In most projects I work on, errors are sent to a remote server. This is useful for monitoring the stability of the application. If you notice that the application is logging unknown errors, you need to investigate why that is. It is acceptable that errors occur, but unknown errors are a red flag. An unknown error indicates that an unexpected code path was triggered. In other words, you need to find out what went wrong and possibly extend the error type with a new case to handle the unknown errors. In short, it is expected for things to go wrong, but you need to know exactly what can go wrong. There should be no surprises. With API error in place, we can refactor the implementation of the fetch episodes method in episodes view model. We start by removing the map and decode operators. We apply the try map operator instead. As the name suggests, the try map operator is a variant of the map operator. The difference is that the function you pass to the try map operator can be throwing. Like the map operator, the function that we pass to the try map operator accepts a data object and a URL response object, and it returns an array of episode objects. In the closure of the trimap operator, we inspect the status code of the response and throw a failed request error if the status code doesn't fall within the success range, that is between 200 and 299. We use a do catch statement to decode the response. This is what the decode operator does for you. The difference is that we catch the error the decoder throws and throw an API error instead. Notice that we print the error the decoder throws to the console. 
This is important because the information the error holds is essential to debug the problem. In production, you would send the error to a remote server, not the console. Even though we throw a custom error in the TriMap operator, the failure type of the publisher that TriMap operator returns is URL error, not API error. This is a problem because it defeats the purpose of throwing a custom error. We can change the failure type of the publisher by applying the map error operator to the publisher the TriMap operator returns. The closure we pass to the map error method accepts the upstream error as an argument. In the closure, we cast the error to API error. If that cast fails, we return a failed request error. Let's go through a few examples of how this works. Let's say the mock API returns a server error, a 500 response. The trimap operator transforms that response into a failed request error, and the map error operator simply propagates the error since it receives an API error object. If the mock API returns a response the JSON decoder isn't able to decode, the trimap operator transforms the error the JSON decoder throws into an invalid response error. As before, the map error operator propagates the error since it receives an API error object. Things are different if the data task publisher terminates with an error. The failure type of a data task publisher is URL error. The map error operator catches the error and transforms it to an API error object, a failed request error to be precise. We can always improve the implementation of the map error operator over time. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Revisit API error.swift and add a case unreachable for the scenario in which the device doesn't have a network connection. Head back to episodes view model.swift. In the closure we pass to the map error operator, we use a switch statement to differentiate between the possible errors the upstream publisher can emit. In the first case, we cast the upstream error to an API error object and return the error without transforming it. In the second case, we check if the error is equal to URL error not connected to internet. In that scenario, we transform the URL error to an API error. In the default clause, we fall back to failed request. Before we end this episode, we need to notify the user if something goes wrong. We define a property, error message, of type optional string. And prefix it with the published property wrapper. We declare the setter privately. In the completion handler of the sync method, we update the error message property by asking the error for the value of its message property. That message property doesn't exist yet. Open API error.swift and define a computed message property of type string. We return a message for each of the cases of the API error enum. Before we test the implementation, we need to update episodes view. In the else clause of the Z stack, we add an if else statement. We use the if statement to safely unwrap the value of the view model's error message property. If error message has a value, we display it to the user using a text object. If error message doesn't have a value, we display the list of episodes. To test the implementation, we add a typo to the URL of the endpoint to fetch the list of episodes and run the application in a simulator. You should see an error message being displayed as a result. With error handling in place, it is time to move the networking logic to a dedicated type, an API client. The view model uses the API client to communicate with the mock API.